ever stop you arguing with yourself? Will you ever tell him? Won't you ever tell him? <laughs> ah, yes? Ah, no? Ha! Video six. Just open your mouth and let it come out! Now, Mama, you don't... Now, nothing! If he ever comes to call again, you see him alone. And if you haven't the grumption to tell him how you feel... Tell him? Well, there's nothing wrong with a lady like Int. Mama! Ritha, where you been? Fishing? Fishing. With Harold. Uh, you mean Professor Hill? Mm-hmm. And look, I still have some worms left. Oh. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Scrumptious. He told me about his hometown. Gary, Indiana, and that he'd take me there someday. And he taught me a song that has hardly any essence in it. <laughs> Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, let me say it once again. I'll do them, Mama. Don't you have to change for the sociable? There's time later. <laughs> Shins live around here. Uh, the Shin home is on East Elm. This is West Elm. Ah, oh, criminy. I see you're the piano teacher around here. You must know about a fellow named Hill, home in a boys' band around here. Yes. Well, don't you worry no more. I've got the goods on him in spades. That no good swindling thimble rigger. That's why I've got to see Shin. Oh, I'm just passing through though. Old number, eight, old number eight only makes a 15 minute water stop. Wish it was 20. Well, sure I'd like to concentrate five minutes on you, girly girl. Who are you? Name's Charlie Cow. Anvil salesman. But just you know, I'm out, to, I'm out to protect the good name of the tribe of attorney from this swindler. Uh, Mr. Cowell, you're making a big mistake. Mistake? My old lady's corset cover a mistake? That man's been a raspberry seed in my tooth for far too long. He spoiled your noise for me, and he ain't gonna spoil Iowa. Say, what kind of piano teacher are you? You couldn't even see through him. He's no more professor. Now, I know all about that. Band leaders are always called professor. Look, it's a harmless deception. He's a fine director and- Now, wait a minute. Fine director? Have you heard one note in music from any band of his? No, but did you- But nothing, girly girl. That man's never formed a band in his life. And he never will. If you just listen to me for a minute. I'd like to. I'd like to do more than that. I sure got the inclination to. But I've got a train to catch. I gotta leave this dynamite with some bar on the way to the depot. Bye bye, girl, girl. Just See a minute, Mr. Cowell. You don't know me yet. Is that an invitation? No, uh, um, what I mean is, I, I don't know you, Yes, and of course. I need more time anyways. I, I mean, as well as I'd like to. Okay, girly girl. Uh, you're, you're an anvil salesman? Uh, that's something really quite different. Takes a real kind of salesman. Anvils have a 
limited appeal, you know? Oh, what am I doing? I missed that train, I'll get fired. I gotta leave a word with Shin. Leave word with me? Not on your tin type. How do I know you'll deliver these letters? Try me. Now there's your train, run for it! Who you think you're protecting? That man's got a girl in every county in Illinois. And that's 102 counties, not counting the piano teachers he's cozied up to over the years. And you're no different. Why, you haven't heard the last of me, girly girl! I can hear the chapel bell chime. Ding dong ding. At the least suggestion, I'll pop the question. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose, without a sweetheart to my name. Good evening, Miss Marion. Light a rose now, everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So here is my love song, not fancy or fine. Light a rose, oh won't you be mine? Light a rose, oh light a rose, oh light a rose. Marion, Marion, dear, who was you just talking to? Oh, my professor here. Mrs. Peru, top of the morning. Miss Marion? Ah, you and Marion are coming set. I've, uh, I've, I've just got some jelly on the stove. There's no jelly on the stove, Mama. Well, I'll put some on. <laughs> um, shall we uh, set, as your mother said? Well, I... You did ask me to call? Did I? I didn't mean anything. Now, Miss Marion, I'm not inferring your invitation meant anything more than academic enlightenment. The think system. I came by your house a time or two this week to try to explain it to you, but there always seem to be people around. Mostly ladies, I thought. Yes, Mrs. Squires and several of the ladies. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Wouldn't want anybody beating my time. <laughs> you wouldn't. No, ma'am. Okay, well, it's evidently not the convenient night. Um, I'll see you at the sociable later. <sighs> Professor Hill, is it true that you've had a hundred Okay, what I'm trying to say is... Yes? Is it true that, that you've developed a... A think system? A think system? Yes, well, it's really very simple. Um, as simple as whistling. Nobody has to tell you how to use your lips in whistling. You simply have to think a tune for it to come out clearly here. Now, just you try this yourself before you ask any questions. Uh I'll take your word. Um, could we sit down? Are all music teachers as dense as I am? All, all music teachers? I dare say you meet dozens, even a hundred. Well, I... Uh, have they all been as fascinated with the think system as I have been? Uh, some more, some less. One young lady had thought the same system before I got to her town. Showed me a few refinements. I see. <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Please, Professor Hill, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have many more important things to be doing than to be explaining the think system to me. Can't think of one. Oh, and I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Now say, where'd you get an idea like that? People hear rumors of traveling salesmen. Well, <laughs> one mustn't believe everything she hears. After all, one even hears rumors about librarians. I assume you're referring to Uncle Matty. 
Uncle Maddie. Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me an assured job so Mother and Winthrop and I would have some security. Surely you of don't think that- Of course not. Of course not. That's exactly what I'm saying. And why do you think people start those rumors? Disappointment, jealousy, jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly. And jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Nothing about you personally, just generally. What have you heard generally? Just that... But of course, it, it stands to reason that disappointment and jealousy could lead to... Well, take you, for instance. Your attentions to customers and... Well, teachers might be misinterpreted, mightn't they? I mean, honestly now, mightn't they? Wh why? And, and so you say, if another salesman or, or someone or someone else were jealous, they could just be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Uh, rumors and things. Sure. Oh, it, it just goes to show that you can never believe everything you hear, doesn't it? I mean, if you discuss Miss Marion, I would be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you, but couldn't we do it sitting down? You do sit, your knees bend and all. We could sit on the porch. We could also sit on a nice hollow log over at the footbridge. I couldn't think of it. I've never been to the footbridge with a man in my life. Uh, just to talk. Please, I, I just can't. Some other time. Maybe tomorrow. My dear little librarian, pile up enough tomorrows and you'll find you've gathered nothing but a bunch of empty yesterdays. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to make today worth remembering. So would I. The footbridge. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Mama! What? I just told Professor Hill that I would meet him at the footbridge in fifteen minutes! <gasps> Glory be and the saints be praised and works! What does? I've been using the thanks system on you from the parlor! Yeah! <laughs> 